I've been using Airtable for a long time, and one of the things that I really wish it did was dynamic filtering for linked relationships. Imagine this scenario where you have a project that you're starting, and you've linked it to a company, and it automatically filters down the contacts for that company for you to link to. We don't have this capability natively in Airtable, but in this video, I'm gonna show you an awesome hack that came to us by way of one of our clients. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and I'm the owner here at Gap Consulting. It's our mission to help you get organized and automated with no code tools. And of course, Airtable is one of our favorite no code database solutions. And in this video, as I said, I'm gonna be sharing with you a little bit of a hack so that you can apply dynamic filtering for linked relationships in your databases. This is not natively available in Airtable. So this is a workaround that we're going to implement. Before we get started, I first wanna say that this came to us by way of one of our clients. Morty has done some work with Colette, one of the team members on our hourly team. And he sent us this email saying, hey, I, I came up with a pretty neat way to do some dynamic filtering. And he shared that with us. So thank you to Morty for bringing this to our attention. I've gotta say, I get a lot of emails like this and 99% of the time I think, yeah, I've been doing that for a while. That's a pretty well-known hack. But in this case, Morty brought up something I had never thought of before, so I'm really, really appreciative that he took the time to send this our way. All right, before we get into the heart of the video, I first want to invite you to join me for some free training. If you are newer to Airtable in general, I've put together an Airtable crash course that's gonna teach you about all the key features that you really need to understand before you can start unlocking the true power of the Airtable software. Grab that training at gapconsulting.io slash Airtable dash crash dash course. I will include links wherever you found this video so that you can get up and running quickly in that free crash course. But without further ado, let's hop on into my screen. We're gonna take a look at the structure in place. First, I wanna start with showing you how this thing works. So over here, I've got companies, Disney and Warner Brothers. As you can see, those companies are linked to some contacts. I've got some pretty obvious contacts here, Mickey, Minnie, Daisy, and Donald. And over here for the contacts at Warner Brothers, we see Tweety Bird, Bugs Bunny, and Yosemite Sam. So we have this dynamic filter, I'm gonna explain this for you in a moment. And then these things are linked to services. Now I'm also pulling up the company ID. This is pretty standard fare for Airtable. Whenever we wanna know that record ID, this is the identification for this particular record. This whole row is identified with this unique record ID. Well, we can just call upon it really easily with a simple formula, record underscore ID. Now I'm gonna flip into contacts. Over here in contacts, I've got the name of the contact, simply linked to companies as I already demonstrated. We're looking up the dynamic filter. This is looking at companies and saying, is that filter box checked, yes or no? And it's bringing it in here if it is. And then of course, contacts also links to services. And services is our third table. Services is where we say, hey, we add a new service. We're gonna do that service on behalf of a company either Disney or Warner Brothers or any other company that we add to our particular database. And then we wanna link that service to a contact, but not just any contact. We wanna link it to a contact that's in that company. And unfortunately, one of the limitations of Airtable is it does not currently have a solution for dynamic filtering of that linked relationship. So if I'm working natively inside of Airtable, it's impossible for me to look at this and only see a list of contacts who work for the business or the company that I've already selected. That seems a little crazy to me. Airtable's been around a long time and this is something that's pretty common fare in many of the other tools that we use but it's a limitation of Airtable. Now the last field here is a lookup of the company ID. I'm looking at the company ID that we pulled in with that formula back at the company level. And so it's looking up that ID and bringing it back here. This is gonna be a key part of our automation. But before we get to the actual automation and how it works, let's take out our interface and just take this out for a spin. I wanna add a service. As you can see, I've added the different grouping here of Disney, and Warner Brothers. And so if I wanna add a new service, let's call that service six. Well, I can bring it in here, type in service six. And when I open up my contacts here, because I have this magical solution built, it's only gonna show me the contacts from Warner Brothers. Let's say this one goes to Bugs Bunny. Okay, cool. 
Great, now I wanna add a service for Disney. All right, add a service for Disney. This is gonna be service number seven. It's applied to Disney. So when I click on my contacts here, I hope to see only those Disney contacts. My friends, that's exactly what I'm seeing. Mickey, Minnie, Daisy, Donald. How is this magic possible, you ask? Let's take a look at the automation itself. Going back now to our previous screen, this is the data, I can flip into automations. And here inside of automations, I have my dynamic filter automation. Now it requires that you have the schema that I've already outlined. We have the company checkbox, company gets assigned first, then we look it up, back inside of our contacts. And we also pass the record ID from the company all the way down to the service, wherever we're adding the new record. So what's it look like? Here it is step by step. A record matches conditions. What are those conditions? First and foremost, we're creating a record in the services table. Second requirement is the company exists. The company is not empty. Third requirement, contact is empty. If you could think back to the examples I just shared with you as I walked through the demo, company already existed when I created the new service, the contact was blank. And that's because I was creating those services in a grouped relationship. I don't have to do it that way, but if I do it that way, the company is filled out that much faster. So those are the conditions I'm looking for. When those conditions are met, I find records. I'm gonna look in my company's table based on the condition of the dynamic filter checkbox that we created is checked. What does that mean? Well, I'm finding wherever I may have checked that box for a company previously, and you'll see why in a minute. Actually, the very next step is I'm going to uncheck any previous filters where that box is checked. So in my company's table, I'm taking any record that I found that has that box checked and I am unchecking it. I am unchecking the box because in the next step, I am going to check the box for whatever company ID, this is the company ID that we passed over to the service, which means that we picked it up in the trigger. So in the fourth step, I'm saying, I wanna go back in and check that dynamic filter box for whatever record we just created in service that's tied to a company. So I'm checking the box at the company level for the service that was just created and assigned to that company. It's a little bit wordy, so let me actually go through this step-by-step -step on the data schema. Let's think about what the automation does on the back end. I create a service, boom. I assign it to a company. Whatever that company is really doesn't matter. It's gonna run the same either way. First, the automation is gonna look for this checkbox and it's gonna uncheck it. Then it's gonna say, what company was assigned to that particular new service? And it's gonna check that box. Let's assume that it was Warner Brothers. Now that automation is run, how do we filter that information on our interface or even here inside of the database? Well, that all comes down to our contacts. What we have on our contacts table is a view for dynamic filtering. So on our dynamic filter view, I'm looking at my dynamic filter. This is the lookup field from companies, and I'm only bringing in those records that have the box checked, okay? So I am only, right now, I'm only seeing those people who work at Warner Brothers. But if I go back to companies, and I uncheck and I check Disney as a company, and I go back to my contacts, well then I'm only gonna see in this particular view, I'm only gonna see those contacts from Disney. And this is really important because I've set up a rule when I'm linking to contacts on my service records. Check this out. My contacts are only allowed to select a record that's showing up in the view that you just saw in my contacts table. This allows me to then say, hey, I've got a new service for company ABC, and it checks the box for company ABC in an automation, therefore suggesting that only contacts for company ABC will appear in the dynamic filter view. Once that occurs, when I'm back here in services and I'm assigning a contact, I can only see contacts that have the box checked from the company level. There are multiple steps to this, but it produces an amazing outcome. Now let's talk about limitations because there are a few. The first and perhaps biggest limitation is the fact that it's going to chew into our automations, both in terms of the number of automations available in our database 
and also in terms of the automation runs that we get for our plan. Airtable usually changes these things every couple of times a year, it feels like, in terms of what is available on each pricing plan. So I don't want to say any hard set in stone numbers. I would rather suggest that you go and check out the pricing on Airtable and make sure that you can afford these additional automation limitations because you're going to go through some automations and the more you use this kind of an approach, the more automations you're going to burn through. Now, the next thing to consider is that this automation can be prone to human error. If I am back in my interfaces and I'm clicking on a company really quickly and I go immediately over to my options for contact, if I'm too fast, I might beat the automation. Even though the automation only takes a couple seconds to run, I could beat the automation. So here it is, I see Mickey, Minnie, Daisy, Donald, but if I were really quick and said, boom, boom, I see Mickey, Minnie, Daisy, Donald down here for Warner Brothers, because I didn't give the automation time to think. Well, if I click out of here and then I look in it again, it's basically like a refresh because the automation is now run, but there is an opportunity for human error. Now, the other thing I want to point out is this requires that I'm filling out a contact before moving on. So whatever the most recent record I created was, in this case, it was this service down here for Warner Brothers. Well, that's what's going to show up for my contacts. So if I wanted to assign a contact back to this one, I'm only going to see Warner Brothers. And that's because the service I created, the most recent service, was down here. Now, this also means that if I want to come in and change somebody, I'm not going to see up to date information. Here I am, I'm looking at these other folks and they obviously do not work for Disney. So it's not a perfect solution, but it is a really good workaround. And I've got to say a pretty creative solution. I tried to go through this as thoroughly as possible, but if you have questions that I did not address, be sure to drop them wherever you found this video. And in the meantime, keep on building.